then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Do you believe in life after addiction? You better believe it. Now, the host of Life After Addiction. That's right. Welcome back. Life After Addiction. I'm Adam Comer. Bruce Stanley. Glad to be here. All right. So, as you know, if you've been following along, we've been in this series of podcasts, Bruce. Man, I'm loving it. I've gotten good feedback. I think the people are loving it. But we've been going through the principles, the principles that we teach in our uh, recovery facility called Life uh, S2L Recovery. Our recovery facility is not Life After Addiction. It's called S2L Recovery. And man, Bruce, it's based on this book that you wrote called uh, Lost and Found, Recovery in Christ. And we teach biblical curriculum. We put a video out there today about how hope is so powerful and and why is there so much hope at S2O Recovery. Uh, and it's because we we teach what the Bible says and, and, and that you don't have to be an addict. And so these principles, we've been going through the different seven, and they're from 2 Peter. Uh, man, what are we on, four or five today? We're on four, four. today. And here's what it is. I've always read this. Let me read it again. Here it is. His divine power, 2 Peter chapter 1, 1, verse 3 and on. Follow with me. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us the precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desires. And we always stop there because, man, if you know anything about addiction, if you've struggled with addiction, if you know someone that's been in addiction, you know that that desire for the drug, the alcohol, the whatever it is, it's just unimaginable. You can't even explain it. And what the Bible's saying right here is you can escape that desire. It goes on and says this, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue or knowledge. I'm sorry, virtue or goodness. We talked about that in the first week. Mm-hmm. You supplement f- virtue with knowledge. We talked about that next. With knowledge, self-control. We talked about that last week. And then now we're at steadfastness. So you supplement all of these things with your faith, and now we're at steadfastness or endurance. Bruce, lead us in. Yeah, perseverance, endurance, uh, steadfastness. Really, this principle takes the first three, which is, uh, you know, learning how to trust God, knowing what the truth is, turning uh, in a different direction when we recognize what we're doing. And so we're, we're basically practicing all three of those things to get to a point where we're persevering. We, we're able to focus. We, we've, we've got some steadfastness. We're, we're gaining some integrity. We, you know, one thing we don't do at S2L or encourage guys to do is count their clean days. However, <laughs> There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I've been clean for six months, I've been clean for a year, I've been clean for two years. Uh, we, we don't recognize and, and identify with the old addict, but man, if, if these are the things, this is the fruit of endurance, right? We're, we're gaining some consistency right. to, to not living that life as an addict anymore. And I love the, the first verses that lead up to adding to your faith these things these seven principles, because basically God's giving us the recipe for life success. He's saying it's not because of you, but it's because of me yeah. and what I can do in your life. And on top of that, the promises that I'll give you uh, if you if you obey what it is that I'm asking you to do, because you'll escape the corruption and you'll live a, a godly life. That's what he's basically saying. And so, you know, people say, well, you know, God doesn't reveal everything to us. Well, I'm sorry, but he does. And he tells us exactly how to live our life and in order to escape the things that are, that are meant to kill us. Basically, we have an enemy of God who is trying to deceive us all the time. And his, his goal is to, to bring us complete destruction. Yeah, and just like in verse 12 and 13, uh, if, if you've gone through the program, man, especially in the last two years, you know these principles. You know why we're teaching them. You know what they mean. You even know practically how to apply them in your life when you're seeking God. But if you're thinking to yourself, why do they keep reading that every time in this little series? Well, verse 12 and 13 tells us, therefore I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to stir you up by way of reminder. 
So we're just trying to stir you up. A lot of people listening haven't heard these things, but I know a lot of you have. Key in, see if something's brought out. If God uses Bruce and myself uh, to stir your affection for this in a different way. Absolutely. And so let's get into the the, the crux of what Principle Four is about, and in this keyword called focus. I always again, like how, yes. Explain keyword again. Let's say someone's tuning in for the first time. When we say keyword, we want you to track with it. What do you mean when you're adding a keyword to steadfastness or endurance? What your keyword? You're about to say it, but explain that. Sure, that's fair. Uh, the Bible tells us these descriptions of the principles. We we you know principle one is is goodness. It's uh, virtue. It's excellence. And the keyword there is trust. And the reason why the keyword is trust is because when we come to God, God knows that we don't trust Him. We don't even know what is good. Yeah. We think we know what is good. And there's a lot of people who say they're a good, per- a good person. <laughs> but the things that we may follow that we're led to in th- this world aren't necessarily what God's talking about when it comes to virtue, excellence, and goodness. And so we've got to trust God and what He says to adhere those things in our life. And... Man, I would tell you that the common denominator with everyone who comes to S2L suffering from addiction, the the very first thing you have to tackle is trust because people, they've just learned not to trust anybody or themselves, and that's why they're at rehab. Yeah. Because they can't can't even trust themselves. So God's like, this this is no different than anything else you've got to learn in relationships. You've got to learn to trust me before we can go forward on anything. Second principle is knowledge and wisdom. And so the key word there is truth. Right, we we've got to get to a point where we can recognize what the truth is and separate it from the lies in which we've we've heard or told ourselves all our life. So when we trust God and then we believe in the truth, that's going to help us to discern the decisions we're going to make. Which comes to principle three, which is turning. That's the key word there is turn. So we're learning self control in principle three, and so when we recognize by trusting God and knowing the truth that we can confess that we're headed in the wrong direction, turn to God, and simply repent what we're doing and go back in the direction which we were going. Yeah. Um, so key word basically uh, is, Bruce, is that in a word to think or to kind of tie to the principle to make you think? Yeah, so where we're at with the, the focus in principle four is that we're basically repeating principles one, two, and three, and that's how we're able to endure. So we're trusting God, we're believing in the truth, and we're turning to God and our discernment. And so by doing that, we're, we're having longevity in, in the fruit in which we're bearing, which is what focus is all about, which is what steadfastness is all about. Yeah. And so Paul Paul says it beautifully here in Philippians 3, 13 through 14. He says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. Mm, That's good. Press on. And, uh, you know, so we have Paul here. Paul is the epitome of somebody who is broken, right? So when we get guys that come into our program just broken from addiction, destruction within their own lives and the people who've been around them that love them. Um, it's devastating to hear some of these stories and how they ended up in rehab. But you take a guy like Paul, who was a killer of Christians, and then on the road to Damascus, Jesus changed his life by appearing to him and asking him why he was persecuting his people, blinded him. Then the story goes on to how Paul became one of the most courageous, ambitious, zealous uh, disciples that... Uh, that followed Jesus. In fact, he wrote almost half of the New Testament. <laughs> yeah, a little more than that. Yeah. And uh, and so here he's saying, look, I forget, I'm forget. i forgetting the past. I, I focus on forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. That's the hope that we instill in these guys who come to our program through biblical teaching is that, man, you don't have to be an addict the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this, Bruce. So endurance, steadfastness, would you say that that is probably, this principle is probably one of the hardest in the aspect of, uh, in your own story, I've heard you talk about it, and I want you to touch on that in just a second, but uh, even inside of the the four pillars, God's Word, the things that we're going to tell them to do daily, read God's Word, 
uh, have good fellowship, pray every day, and have do something action point every day towards what God's calling you to. Even inside of that, we, when people come back to the program, the stats a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time, someone's saying, "Man, I let I, I didn't do this stuff every day. I, I didn't. I let one fall, or all of them fall." And it's not like we're asking people for that. Hey, did you do your pillars? No, they're presenting that, and so we know that this endurance. Gosh, man. Talk on that, this endurance. And I know you talk about in your story just the relapse king, right? Yeah. And how you just didn't have this endurance. You'd have it 30, 60, 90 days, whatever, and the world would come at you, and it just didn't have the steadfastness in the Lord. Kind of touch on that for a second, because that's big, man. You even said in the first episode, that, or the last episode, that these two in the middle, mm -hmm. so three and four in the middle, are very crucial uh, to the whole gig. Absolutely. So like I was saying with kind of repeating steps one through three, and how, that's how we are able to do uh, Steps four. one through three. Oh, did three. I say that? Sorry. <laughs> principles one through three. Yes. Uh, and, but here's here's the biggest thing, Adam. And yeah, I was a relapse king. And there's many people who come to our program, when you don't go to rehab because you're able to figure it out on your own. Right. right? So they've everybody that comes to us has had a, a problem with focus. Yeah. And there's no endurance there. Focus is the key word. That's yeah. good. That's so, good, man. So they, they can't endure. They, they've had relapse after relapse after relapse, and then they end up in rehab. And what God's here's two things interesting about this is, one, God's not speaking to addicts, mm. right, in these principles. Right. He's speaking to every human being. Yeah, to people. And, and to, yeah. to be more specific, he's talking to believers Right? He's saying, add to your faith, supplement your faith, these things. So there's, there's one thing about salvation and how it happens in a moment. And, and if that truly happened to you, sincerely that happened to you, which is only between you and God and the honesty there, no, no other man can judge or condemn you in that. But if that happened, then you're secure in your salvation. And the Bible also talks about how it can never be taken away from you. Nothing can snatch you from the Father's hand. And so... What is it about uh, salvation and then this, these principles? Why does he say add to your faith? Why does he say supplement your faith? We know that faith, is, faith alone is what gives us salvation and secures our eternity. Then why are we adding these things to our faith? And it, it has to do with sanctification. Hmm. So, and this is something that a lot of people don't get, right? Especially Christians. And, and I'm just calling out the church here. <laughs> And that people get saved, and then they think it's all just through osmosis now. Like how it all is supposed to just happen. I'm supposed to be just a good person and live my life in, in a better way just because I got saved. Mm. Well, your eternity has been secured if that sincerely happened to you. And and here's here's the thing to that. Jesus said, "Many will come in my name, and and I will tell them I didn't know them." Yeah. And they say, well, Jesus, didn't we do all these things? You know, didn't we go to church? Didn't we pray? Didn't we do all these things? Like, yeah, but I, don't, I don't know who you are. Yeah, I never and, knew and, you. And, and so some might say, well, if, if you're not desiring to, to, to be sanctified, if you don't want to change and do these things in a different direction than you used to be, then maybe there, just maybe nothing really happened there. But what, what the deal is with sanctification and this growth model that God gives us to purify ourselves and to walk in a different direction, to turn and to live our lives in a different way than what we were living. It's this act of sanctification. God's saying, I've got to grow you, right? And Paul puts it like this, you know, when you first believed I had to feed you with spiritual milk because you couldn't even handle spiritual solid food yet. You were a child and you had to grow and just like your own children, you know, you, you do everything for them basically in the beginning and then slowly you start backing off and teaching them how to do things on their own, right? Yeah. And even to the point where you're always watching, you're always watching, but you, you have to even let them fail at, at, at points. Right? And God is like correcting us, right? So God never tempts us, but he does test us. Mm. And through this life of testing, God is growing us. He's sanctifying us. He's get, getting us to be stronger in our faith so that we can endure that we can have steadfastness, that we can build some integrity. People go, look at that man's life. Yeah, That guy is different than yeah. the guy I used to know, right? And it's not about, well, he said he got saved. Yeah, it's that, but the fruit of your life is, man, you're living differently. Mm. And so God's growing us. And, that, and, and just in general, one, like I was saying, 
he, he's talking to Christians, he's talking to all people, not just to addicts. And he's saying, look, you've got to grow in your faith. Otherwise, you're going to be slapped around by the enemy all the time. And, and because you're not strengthening yourself, you're not, in, you're not trying to, to live your life differently. You're not obeying the, the things I'm asking you to do. And so he's teaching us. What does Scripture say in 2 Timothy? He says it's, it's good for yeah. correction, for reproof, for yeah. teaching, for all things equipping us to, do, to live a righteous life, right? Yeah. So I know, that you have, I know that you have four practical things that you want to throw at people based on this. But before you do that, man, I have, there's a supplemental Scripture that, that when we were looking at this, I kind of wanted to go to. Uh, and it's from Paul as well. It's 1 Corinthians uh, Paul's writing to the church in Corinth. And check this out, man. When we're talking, again, we're talking about the principle, steadfastness, endurance, uh, and the key word of focus. Here's what it says. For this perishable body must, be, must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come, pa- shall come to pass the saying that is written, and I believe it's, qu- it's quoted a few places in the Old Testament. I believe Hosea is where this is. But put on the, the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? And then verse 56 in 1 Corinthians, the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, verse 58, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. And man, that just is like, man, stand fast. What you're doing is not in vain, and you're falling under the, the authority of God's word, and you're doing his work. It won't be in vain. And man, God's really putting this message on my heart for this week's catapult about what freedom is. And, and my mentor talked about it as well. I know how the culture of freedom is no authority, do what I want when I want to do it. That's freedom to me. But that really just causes bondage. Hmm. And what we're talking about at S2L and biblical freedom is you're falling under the authority of God and his word. And you're free from all that bondage that when you don't comes. So I don't know. Absolutely. Stay steadfast, man. Steadfast in the work of the Lord, and know it's not in vain. I yeah. love that. That's great. And the second thing I was going to say was the power of the Holy Spirit. So when we're doing these things, it's not just like we're doing steps and it's mind over matter. Right. And, you know, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this, what the Lord tells me to do, and I'm just going to white knuckle through it, and eventually it's just going to happen. No, your obedience, right, to Never losing heart. I know you love to 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 talk about that. We don't lose heart. We don't give up. Yeah, and it's the power of God who's changing us. Yeah, right. So you talk about not in vain. That's what that means. Is that what we invest into what God's asking us to do actually makes change. It's not our own power. It's God's power. It's the Holy Spirit who's residing in us that changes our desires. We we. We evolve into something else, which is we're going to get into the next principle, which is identity, mm. right? And and being and remembering who you are, so that the steadfastness continues through your life. So let's get to these four things that I was saying we can we can practice in endurance, right? Yeah, man. So uh, first, let me just say when you look up the word perseverance, endurance, steadfastness, here's what the the definition of those words are. An act of concentrating interest or activity on something. Hmm. Okay, so when we talk about focus, steadfastness, endurance, it's you're basically concentrating. You're putting all your effort towards these things. You're not giving up, even in our your failure. So that's a key thing we tell our guys in the program is in this endurance. There's going to be times when you're going to fail. Yeah, and so the the goal isn't to be sinless; it's to sin less. Yeah. Right. And because we're always going to sin, but different than than maybe other routes of recovery or how to change the direction of your life is you don't have shame when you fail. Right. There's a difference between guilt and shame. Guilt says, yep, I did that. I admit it. I confess. Yeah. Shame says that's what I did and that's who I am. Who I am. Yeah. And so God's just saying, look. And that's what the enemy would want you to think, too. Yeah. God's just saying, look, stand back up, man, uh, child of God, turn back to me, keep going, endure. 
Like, yeah. You confess what you've done and you keep going. There's no loss of anything. You don't have to go back to principle one. You don't have to go right. back to step one. You don't have to like shut up for 30 days and, and you know, whatever the, the, the world says that you got to do in acting out this shame. So here's, here's four things we can put into practice, right? So yeah. first one is avoid blaming. Avoid blaming, especially past circumstances done by others or yourself to justify not moving forward. So this is a big deal, right? So yeah. this kind of goes back to the trust thing. It's like, stop blaming everything. Blame shifting, yeah. Oh my gosh, man. Well, we see it all the time, don't we, Adam? Yeah, and, and, and here's the thing about that. The reason, well, I'll let, I'll let you finish, but this is a huge deal about don't blame things because when you're doing that, you're basically saying, what, do you, what is your popular interrogation thing? Admit nothing. Deny, Deny everything. everything. Make immediate counter uh, Accus- counter Accusa- accusations. <laughs> yeah, counter uh, accusations. Because let's get the attention off of me. And if you want the attention off of you, you're not dealing with your sin. You're not repenting. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. So we've, we've got to get out of the practice of doing that and just being honest and just saying, look, okay, that this is what happened. Yep, I did that, uh, but I've been covered by the blood of Christ, so I can I can confess this, and I can uh, and, and to my God and to others in my life, and then I can just keep moving on. So stop blaming. Yeah. What blaming does is is gives it gives you the justification to not continue. You just you give up. You say, well, I can't do this. There's no hope in this, man. This is just all I'll ever be. I, you know, it may work for some people, but it can't work for me. That's that's a bunch of bull. Here's what I would say. So if if you're noticing blaming in someone, or even if you catch yourself doing it, hopefully you're at a place where you're catching yourself do things you used to do, you don't like it. So if you if a flag goes off, man, I'm blaming others for things, that could be a good indicator that your endurance is about to fall. Right? Absolutely. We see guys all the time that come to us from other programs. And we get guys, who, and I'll ask, how many how many rehabs you've been to? It's amazing how, how high that number can go sometimes. Yeah. And it's like, well, what did, why didn't it work? With that? Well, this problem, you know, that this place is this, and that guy did this, and you know, I couldn't deal with that, and you know, it's like, hmm. So all these places were wrong, and you're right. And so why are you here at this rehab? Yeah, it, it's like you've got to get to a point where it's not anybody else's fault; it's you. You're the common denominator, and why you stop blaming. Second right. thing is. Uh, we can judge our endurance by the level of fruit that we're producing, and that is going to be from others looking at you. You can say all you want about the fruit, fruit you're producing, and you can be honest about it and know. In fact, First uh, John, the book of First John is all about assurance in our faith, right? It, it helps us to look at ourselves and be honest about the fruit which we're bearing or to see in others if there's lack thereof. And for, for God always says, examine yourselves. Like be be honest, like. But the the best way you can determine that is is by asking others. Like, what are other people seeing in your life? Are they seeing the fruit? And if they are, then you are enduring. Stop telling yourself you're not. I get guys all the time that just beat themselves up to the very end. It's like, dude, do you realize like how good you're doing? Yeah, you're doing really well, man. Look at the difference between three weeks ago when you came in here. And yeah, I love your heart and that you want to do better. But stop beating yourself up. Yeah, you're actually producing fruit. Um, third thing is uh, read scripture, and and authors of other books. Right, stop saying that you don't know. If you don't know, then God's not giving you an out for your ignorance. In fact, Proverbs twenty four twelve says, uh, "Son of man, like don't stop pretending you don't know what's going on. I know that you knew." Right? Read. Yeah, supplement of verse there is John eight. If you are my disciples, abide in my word, then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set, set you free. free. Abide in my word, the truth will set you free. Yeah. Uh, the fourth thing is fellowship with other believers. Now, I know like the, the last one I just said in this one are, are key to the pillars that you mentioned earlier, and we ask guys to do over and over again. So, look, you, you can't walk in this salvation. You can't endure in your life all by yourself. We're created to be in relationship with each other. Relationship with God, relationship with each other. We're going to need each other. We need to be in relationship with God. That's why we read. That's why we pray. That's why we continue to, to grow in our in our understanding and our wisdom uh, and our truth from God and trusting Him even more. And then we, we've got to have fellowship with each other. We need brothers and sisters in our life in which we surround ourselves with where we're helping each other. You know? yeah. And if you do these things, 
uh, the chances of your endurance are going to be far better than in any other thing that you might try on your own. Yeah. And yeah. there's a power in that. There's a real power in that. Not just you, but God, who says he's always watching. He says he'll never leave us. He's the one. He's just, God, here's the thing. Somebody said this to me, and I don't know if I heard it from a pastor in a sermon or not, but it, it was just this thing. It just hit me when the way this person said it. And it was just like, God's just wanting you to cooperate. Mm-hmm. Right? That's called relationship. It, he's just saying, like, are you going to cooperate with me here? Are you going to make an effort? Are you going to do anything? Because if you would just do that, the power that I'm going to push behind all that, you will never know like what God is doing most of the time and and securing your future. But he's just saying, man, are you going to try? Yeah. Yeah. Where's your faith? <laughs> yeah. So, so there's the, there's the, the principle, the principle of steadfastness, endurance. Um, guys, we've given you good knowledge. Um, man, b- abide in God's word. Do these things, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free, not Amen. outside of any authority, but under the authority of God and the way he wants you to live. All right, guys, life after addiction. You better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Life After Addiction is a production of S2L Recovery. If you have any questions you'd like answered on the podcast, email them to info at springtolife.net. That's info at spring, the number two, life.net. And for more information on addiction recovery, visit s2lrecovery.org.